Hey guys, Armin Gunn here tonight talking about something pretty interesting. This is informally known as the Polish Uzi and it, it's designed aboard a bunch of cues from the original Uzi and it improved a bunch of those. So much so that I would consider this probably a better Uzi than all of the variants out there with the exception of the current Uzi Pro manufactured by IWI Industries. Now, if you guys want to see me shoot this thing, that was two videos back. We did a range day with this thing, basically out there POV style, running the gun, showing you guys how to run it, going through the controls, the ergonomics, and talking about the shooting experience. So I'll cover those controls and the, and the shooting characteristics of the gun again briefly tonight, but we're also gonna focus on the features, the specs, a little bit about the history, as well as various versions and variants that preceded this gun, as well as a few countries that are still using it today. And then we'll briefly discuss some of the modularity aspects of the platform as well, such as the interchangeable top rails with the 1913 interface making it optics ready, and the very fast changing barrels. That will cover the actual barrel install, uninstall in the field strip and internals video, which will be probably the next one that will come up in a couple days. All right, we'll kick things off with a quick refresher on the controls. So just drop the magazine and prove it safe, though first of all, we will uh, move it to fire because being on safe actually locks up the action. So there we go, we're safe, we're clear. So again, that's basically touched on the, on the main parts right there already. So your magazine releases right here. The grip is so girthy and thick that it's actually not practical to break grip to come over and release the mag with your thumb. Instead, it's more preferred to use your third finger on the shooting hand because it's kind of just right there. It's actually really easy to actuate this mag release. It is fenced a bit on the top, but overall it's, it's in there and it only needs a very shallow depression to uh, drop the mag. The mags also drop free really nicely. They're just like straight out. The magazine well is not beveled, but again, the mags slip in. As long as they're reasonably close, you get in there pretty good. The feed lips are tapered in pretty nicely, so they do kind of slip in there and slide in there pretty well. So again, your safety is this very awkward and very stiff switch back here. Were this the submachine gun version, it would have a further position denoted by a C. So in this one, shoot is the P, safe is the Z, and then C would denote full auto fire, and it would be the next position over. And when it's in safe, the entire action is locked up. So next, let's cover the bolt catch and release. That's gonna be like the redeeming factor of this platform. It's super convenient and definitely an enhancement over the traditional Uzi. Pull the bolt back, just lift up with your thumb and that catches it. It's a nice angled shelf, it's textured. Great to get your thumb on there and just, it drops really quite easily. So the charging handle on this thing is perfectly flat, which is quite nice. It's just a nice size where it's not too big that it's gonna get hung up on things or drastically increase the profile of the firearm, but it's still enough that you can really get, you know, a solid knuckle around it to cycle the action. The action is actually quite smooth as well. It's not too hard to cycle it. And finally, the trigger. It's got quite the aggressive curve on there. We'll just do a quick uh, trigger pull. It's, it's got a bit of take up initially and then it's got some mush and then it breaks. It's fairly light. Here's your reset. It's kind of got a false audible reset that happens pretty early, but the actual reset is actually quite a bit further out right there, and then breaks again. So it's not the best trigger in the world, but I mean, for what it is, I think it's, you know, a submachine gun developed in the 90s. They could have done a lot worse. Ergonomics wise, the biggest problem is gonna be this girthy grip. Forward hand, it's got a pretty comfortable wide foregrip here. It's got a slight indentation here. It's a bit of a hand stop. It's got some nice little spots for your thumb. And this particular foregrip, there's two versions available. This one's meant with a screw out plug for either a flashlight or a laser. The other version essentially has a fold down front foregrip. Not quite MP7-ish, but along those lines. We've got two front sling points at the forward part of the gun, as well as two more at the rear to attach slings. And then the stock pops out, tilts down. There is no inside or outside position. It's this is what you get, at least for this model. This model, the BRS-99, mine is based on the original PM98 submachine gun, whereas there's a newer version that's based on the PM06 further modernization. We'll talk about that a little bit, what was different, but the stock was one of the different things. All right, guys, insofar as shooting the BRS-99, honestly, it's a dream to shoot. It's really soft shooting, soft recoiling, just really nice and smooth. And I noticed that 
from the from shortly after I got it, took it out the first time. This was a couple of years ago. And just comparing it to other 9mm PCCs or SMGs, this thing is just remarkably soft shooting. So now I'll go through the specs quickly, then we'll cover the interesting features of the gun, and then we'll talk a little bit about how this developed from and is different from and similar to the Uzi. So this gun with the typical factory barrel installed, which is this guy right here, it's a 7.25 or 7.3 inch barrel. That would come to about here and that makes the gun from the tip of the barrel to the, well, inside part of the stock, 15 inches long. You add about another inch by the time you curve out to the back part of that uh, butt stock. This version weighs about 2.3 kilograms the most modern version based on the PM06 submachine gun is about 2.5. Part of that is gonna be the addition of the pick rail interface and a couple other minor tweaks. So this gun features a last round bolt hold open, which is a really nice feature given the time that this was made in, developed in. The telescopic stock as I covered, it's only got the one position and it cants down. The nice thing about it canting down is it does bring your eye line lower. It's a little bit lower of a bore. One critique with this design, however, was that the muzzle wanted to rise on you know, heavy firing. So the later PM06 redesign converted this to just a straight pull stock with, I believe, three positions. So it would just come out straight like this, which made using the factory irons a little tricky, but that's when they added the 1913 interface, which got your uh, line of sight up a little bit higher. And of course, the quick change of barrel system is a ratcheting system, which is very similar if not identical to what the Uzi made use of. And, and honestly, that's just the beginning of the similarities between this and the Uzi, apart from the overall shape. It also features a telescopic bolt, which uh, basically goes around the barrel. I'll show you that guys in better detail in the next video when I go through the disassembly. But essentially that allows part of the bolt to go over top of the barrel once it's fully closed and still maintain like it's the mass it requires for the action to cycle reliably. And what that's able to do then is shorten the overall package of the gun. Both the civilian semi-automatic version and the full auto submachine gun version fired from the closed bolt and overall the system was just renowned for its superb accuracy. I heard reports that it did a three inch groove at 50 yards, which again for a nine mil PCC or SMG is quite saying something, especially with the simple blowback action like this, the method of the barrel being attached, that's actually quite remarkable. In terms of magazines, one of the criticism was that the maximum capacity magazine made for was a 25 rounder. There are also 15 rounders that are flush at the bottom of the grip. All right, guys, taking a moment to address the sights, which are actually done really quite well. There's a few really good things going on here. So we've got a hooded front sight post. It's got an opening at the top for more light to get into the aperture and make an adjustments more easily. It's got a post, which basically threads up and down to adjust for elevation. Rear sight, you got two. You've got a peep sight, which is really nice. And then you flip that down for a notch set up for 75 meters. And this is adjustable for windage through that screw right there. Overall, you're looking at about 12, 12 and a half inch sight radius, which is again, nice, helping you guys pick up some basic accuracy if you're using the irons, just by increasing that sight radius. Nice to see it of a platform like this. Additionally, these sights are mounted on the receiver itself, not on the cover plate. So moving that thing around isn't gonna mess with your sighting every time. So for a little history on the gun now, this essentially replaced the PM63 RAK that was in service in the Polish law enforcement and military of the day. The original designation for this was the PM84. It was actually chambered in 9x18 Makarov. So if you're Brandon Herrera, that's probably the model you'd want. The gun was smaller and lighter in that configuration as well, weighing only a little over four pounds. It was a lighter duty receiver and a few other things as well. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the factory that made this, FB Radom, invested in a new platform, which was the PM84P, which P standing for Parabellum, indicating the nine by 19 parabellum round, and the gun immediately saw a lot more success. They also did a pretty big redesign at that point in time as well. There was a previous iteration of the stock, which was not very good, and they replaced that. They also beefed up the gun itself to make it more sturdy and reliable. And when all was said and done, it ended up weighing about four and three quarter pounds. The gun was redeveloped again in 1998. This became the designation PM98, but that was where you once again saw an improved stock, which is actually the stock that, that this one here features. After the redesign, the weight bumped up marginally to just around five pounds or 2.3 kilos. The final redesign took place around 2006, designating the PM06. And that was when they finally took into light some of the police requirements of the day. They made the inline shoulder stock with a three position telescopic stock that did not cant down. They went to the new design of the handguard, which you see there. 
and the optics rail then featured a 1913 interface to make it optics ready. I've got an Aimpoint T1 in here, actually H1, and an ADM mount. The top rail is readily swappable and actually sits in there pretty tight and secure. And with that final iteration, it picked up a little bit more weight, rounding out around 2.5 kilograms or 5.5 pounds. Now the guns in full auto fire about 640 rounds per minute, which is actually really nice. Pretty much around what the original Uzis shot at. The Uzi minis shooting at about 900 rounds per minute. The micro something like 1200 rounds per minute, which is just like a pack of hornets that you can barely hold on to. So this would have actually been a really pleasant, controllable shooting experience. And again, the accuracy of the closed bolt system, actually quite admirable. Despite all the enhancements relative to the Uzis of the day, this design just never really took off outside of Poland anyways. And to date, there's only been about 60,000 ever made. 50,000 of which are still in Poland and in use to this day. Some other countries using the system include the Philippines, Iraq, and the Indonesian police force. And guys, in closing, I just wanted to clarify one thing. In my last video, I mentioned these took Uzi mags. That is not true. Well, at least it's, it's not accurate anymore. There were some original models for the civilian market that were produced that took Uzi mags. However, they were redesigned and to get an Uzi mag to work in here now would take extensive modification which is, um, for better or for worse, the factory magazines now, unfortunately, are incredibly expensive and not very common. If you ever get a chance to shoot one of these things, I would recommend it. It is a very pleasant experience, and I hope to have an Uzi on the channel before too long that I can compare this thing side by side with. Guys, if you like my content, please consider looking me up on Instagram, right over here, at arm.and.gun. I post daily stories, posts, all that kind of good stuff, a lot of behind the scenes action, in the armory here. And it's just a nice opportunity to get a little less formal with y'all. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. That all really does help get the channel out there. Definitely trying to grow, grew like 10% in the last month, which was pretty awesome. Again, this channel is only about a year old and I'm super grateful for all the support that I've gotten to date. You guys are the bomb. I love ya. And with that guys, I'm out for the night. Armor Gun, out.